In this video, we'll be taking apart the Umix smartwatch. This watch sports a thin full aluminum alloy body with a weightless design and a curved 390 by 450 high-res AMOLED display, keeping it clear and vivid under direct sunlight. It comes in three different magnetic strap colors and features blood oxygen, blood pressure, and blood glucose monitoring. It also does MET measuring and provides seven days of typical battery life. So let's take this apart and have a look on the inside. So to take it apart, we're going to have to apply some heat using either a hairdryer or a heat gun to the screen to loosen up the adhesive underneath and carefully pry the screen off. Once the screen has been separated from the housing, it can be lifted from the right to the left, but be careful since the cable for the screen is still attached. The flex cable for the screen can now be disconnected from the main board. Here's a better look at the back of the screen. So we can see that there's a 175 milliamp hour battery, which connects to the board with the red and black cables, which are soldered. So if you need to replace the battery, you would have to desolder those two cables. The speaker is also connected to the board with red and black cables, and it's held in place with a cure in place gasket, which helps prevent dust or debris as well as water from getting in from the speaker opening. So if you were planning on replacing the speaker or taking that out, you'd have to cut out the gasket using either an X-Acto knife or a razor blade, and then lifting up and pulling it out. The power button cable is located on this side, and the cable for it runs underneath the battery. There are also two Phillips screws which are holding down the main board. Once the cables for the microphone and the speaker have been desoldered from the board, the battery and main board can be lifted over. The vibrator motor is held down with some adhesive. With some heat, it'll pry off. So this flex cable connects the power button as well as the sensors on the back to the main board. And here we have a better look at the back. We can see the sensors located over here and the back of the board. Looking at the housing, the charging pins are located here which make a contact with these two gold pins on the board to charge the battery. And here's another look at the aluminum alloy housing. For the repairability score, I give it a four out of 10. The parts aren't too difficult to replace, but the fact most of them are soldered to the board with cables will make it more difficult for the average person to repair. Aside from that, it's clean and organized. With that being said, I'll place links in the description and I'll see you in the next one.